What is theology? Theology, from the Greek theos, God, and logia, word, is not a uniquely Christian word. The Greek verb theology refers to the act of speaking about a God, while the noun theologos refers to a person who engages in theology, that is, a theologian. The adjective theologikos describes something theological, while the noun theologia means, a word about God, literally, theology. These words were used in pagan religious context centuries before the New Testament. None of these four words are found in the New Testament or the Septuagint. The earliest known Christian use of one of these terms is a reference to the Apostle John as a theologos early in the 2nd century AD. Christian theology is the study of the divine revelation in the Bible. It has God as its perpetual centerpiece, God's word as its source, and godliness as its aim. As Alva McLean puts it, Out of God all things come, he is the origin. Through God all things exist, he is the sustainer of all things. Unto God, back to God, he is the goal. There is the circle of eternity, out, through, back point one. David Wells has crafted a notable working definition of Christian theology. Theology is the sustained effort to know the character, will, and acts of the triune God as he has disclosed and interpreted these for his people in scripture, in order that we might know him, learn to think our thoughts after him, live our lives in his world on his terms, and by thought and action project his truth into our own time and culture. Point two. The Apostle John died in about AD 98. With his writing of Revelation, the canon of scripture was completed and closed. It did not take long for succeeding generations to begin writing about scriptural truth. Some of the more significant authors and their volumes include the following. Unknown author, the Didache, CA 110, Irenaeus, CA 120-202, Proof of the Apostolic Preaching Clement of Alexandria, CA 150 is CA 215, Stromata Origen, CA 184 is CA 254, On First Principles Gregory of Nazianzus, CA 330 is CA 389. Five Theological Orations Augustine, 354-430, Enchiridion John of Damascus, CA 675 is CA 749, An Exact Exposition of the Orthodox Faith Peter Lombard, CA 1095 is CA 1169, For Books of Sentences Thomas Aquinas, 1225-1274, Summa Theologica John Calvin, 1509. 1564, Institutes of the Christian Religion Thomas Watson, CA 1620-1686, A Body of Divinity Francis Turretin, 1623-1687, Institutes of Elenctic Theology John Gill, 1697-1771, A Body of Doctrinal Divinity John Dick, 1764-1833, Lectures on Theology. Prominent theologies from the 19th, 20th, and 21st centuries are listed in the bibliography at the end of this chapter. I. Definition of theology. Theology is the science of God and of the relations between God and the universe. Though the word, theology, is sometimes employed in dogmatic writings to designate that single department of the science which treats of the divine nature and attributes, prevailing usage, since Abelard, A. D. 1079-1142, entitled his general treatise, Theologia Christiana, has included under that term the whole range of Christian doctrine. Theology, therefore, gives account, not only of God, but of those relations between God and the universe in view of which we speak of creation, providence and redemption. John the Evangelist is called by the Fathers, the Theologian, because he most fully treats of the internal relations of the persons of the Trinity. Gregory Nazianzen, 328, received this designation because he defended the deity of Christ against the Arians. For a modern instance of this use of the term, theology, in the narrow sense, see the title of Dr. Hodge's first volume, Systematic Theology, Volume 1, Theology. But theology is not simply, the science of God, nor even, the science of God and man. It also gives account of the relations between God and the universe. If the universe were God, theology would be the only science. Since the universe is but a manifestation of God and is distinct from God, there are sciences of nature and of mind. Theology is the science of the sciences, not in the sense of including all these sciences, but in the sense of using their results and of showing their underlying ground. See Wardlaw, Theology, 1 colon 1, 2. Physical science is not a part of theology. 
As a mere physicist, Humboldt did not need to mention the name of God in his Cosmos, but see Cosmos 2 418, where Humboldt says, Psalm 104 presents an image of the whole cosmos. Bishop of Carlisle, science is atheist, and therefore cannot be atheistic. Only when we consider the relations of finite things to God, does the study of them furnish material for theology. Anthropology is a part of theology, because man's nature is the work of God and because God's dealings with man throw light upon the character of God. God is known through his works and his activities. Theology therefore gives account of these works and activities so far as they come within our knowledge. All other sciences require theology for their complete explanation. Proudhun, if you go very deeply into politics, you are sure to get into theology. On the definition of theology, see Luthard, Compendium der. Dogmatic, 1 colon 2, Blunt, Dick Doct. And his theol, Art, Theology, H. B. Smith, Introd. To Christ. Theol, 44, Compare to. Aristotle, Metaph, 10, 7, 4, 11, 6, 4, and Lactantius, De Ira Dei, 11. Definitions of theology Other definitions of theology are often given. 1. Sometimes the word is restricted to its etymological meaning, a discourse concerning God. Orpheus and Homer were called theologians among the Greeks, because their poems treated of the nature of the gods. Aristotle classed the sciences under the heads of physics, mathematics, and theology, i.e., those which concern nature, number, and quantity, and that which concerns God. The fathers spoke of the Apostle John as the theologian, because in his gospel and epistles the divinity of Christ is rendered so prominent. The word is still used in this restricted sense when opposed to anthropology, soteriology, ecclesiology, as departments of theology in its wider sense. 2. Theology is sometimes said to be the science of the supernatural. But what is the supernatural? The answer to that question depends on the meaning assigned to the word nature. If by nature is meant the external world as governed by fixed laws, then the souls of men and other spiritual beings are not included under the term. In this use of the word nature, the supernatural is synonymous with the spiritual and theology, as the science of the supernatural is synonymous with pneumatology. If this view be adopted, psychology becomes a branch of theology, and the theologian must, as such, teach mental philosophy. The word nature is, however, often taken in a wider sense, so as to include man. Then we have a natural and a spiritual world. And the supernatural is that which transcends nature in this sense, so that what is supernatural is of necessity also superhuman. But it is not necessarily superangelic. Again, nature may mean everything out of God, then the supernatural is the divine, and God is the only legitimate subject of theology. In no sense of the word, therefore, is theology the science of the supernatural. Hooker says, theology is the science of divine things. If by divine things, or, the things of God, he meant the things which concern God, then theology is restricted to a discourse concerning God, if he meant the things revealed by God, according to the analogy of the expression, things of the Spirit as used by the Apostle in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 14, then the definition amounts to the more definite one given above. 3. A much more common definition of theology, especially in our day, is that it is the science of religion. The word religion, however, is ambiguous. Its etymology is doubtful. Cicero refers it to religia, to go over again, to consider. Religio, is then consideration, devout observance, especially of what pertains to the worship and service of God. Religions, is devout, conscientious. Religiousus, in a good sense, is the same as our word religious, in a bad sense, it means scrupulous, superstitious. Religentum es apportit, religiosum nephers. Augustine and Lactantius derive the word from religare, to bind back. Augustine says, Ipse Deus enim fons nostri beatudinus, ipse omnis appetitionius ist finis. Hunc elegens vel potius religentes a miseramus enim negligens, hunc ergo religentes, und it religio dicta prohibita, ad um delection tendimus ut. Perveniendo quiescamus. And Lactantius, vinculo pietatis abstricti, deo relegati sumus, und ipsa religio nomen accipit, non, 
ut cicero interpretatus ist, a religendo, five according to this religio is the ground of obligation. It is that which binds us to God. Subjectively, it is the inward necessity of union with God. Commonly the word religion, in its objective sense, means modus deum colendi, as when we speak of the pagan, the Mohammedan, or the Christian religion. Subjectively, it expresses a state of mind. What that state characteristically is, is very variously stated. Most simply it is said to be the state of mind induced by faith in God, and a due sense of our relation to him. Or as Wegscheider expresses it, equalis et constans animi affectio, qua homo, necessitudinum suami and demki ternum, quae ei cum summo omnium rerum auctor ac moderator sanctissimo intercedit, intimo sensu complexus, cogitations, voluntates et action soirs ad. Hume refer studit. Or, as more concisely expressed by. Brechneider, faith in the reality of God, with a state of mind and mode of life in accordance with that faith. Or, more vaguely, recognition of the mutual relation between God and the world, Fisher, or, the recognition of a superhuman causality in the human soul and life, Thiel. Faith founded on feeling in the reality of the ideal, Jacobi. The feeling of absolute dependence, Schleiermacher. The observance of the moral law as a divine institution, Kant. Faith in the moral order of the universe, Fichte. The union of the finite with the infinite or God's coming to self-consciousness in the world, Schelling. This diversity of views as to what religion is, is enough to prove how utterly vague and unsatisfactory must be the definition of theology as the science of religion. Besides, this definition makes theology entirely independent of the Bible. For, as moral philosophy is the analysis of our moral nature, and the conclusions to which that analysis leads, so theology becomes the analysis of our religious consciousness, together with the truths which that analysis evolves. And even Christian theology is only the analysis of the religious consciousness of the Christian, and the Christian consciousness is not the natural religious consciousness of men as modified and determined by the truths of the Christian scriptures, but it is something different. Some say it is to be referred to a new life transmitted from Christ. Others refer everything distinctive in the religious state of Christians to the church, and really merge theology into ecclesiology. We have, therefore, to restrict theology to its true sphere, as the science of the facts of divine revelation so far as those facts concern the nature of God and our relation to him, as his creatures, as sinners, and as the subjects of redemption. All these facts, as just remarked, are in the Bible. But as some of them are revealed by the works of God, and by the nature of man, there is so far a distinction between natural theology, and theology considered distinctively as a Christian science. With regard to natural theology, there are two extreme opinions. The one is that the works of nature make no trustworthy revelation of the being and perfections of God, the other, that such revelation is so clear and comprehensive as to preclude the necessity of any supernatural revelation.